So for the digital SAT, there's a lot of confusion on what's going to be tested and how to study for it. And based on my observation of the nine official practice exams provided by the College Board and the Blue Book, and the seven international digital SATs that were conducted for the past year, it is my conclusion that about 80% of the digital SAT is going to be the same as the paper SAT. The same questions are tested the exact same way and they're solved the exact same way as well. However, the 20% is what you have to look out for because they are relatively new. Meaning a good amount of these questions are ones that you have never seen before. And some of them are one of those one-off questions from the paper SAT. A question like this was tested once on the paper SAT for the past six, seven years, but SAT College Board was like, nah, we're not gonna use this question anymore and they were never to be seen again. But for the digital SAT, the same exact question is showing up left and right and it's showing up so frequently to the point where it's kind of confirmed that you wanna know the ins and outs of this questions so that you will be prepared. So long story short, there are a lot of new things you need to know for the digital SAT. And as I implement all of these updates to the SAT Math Accelerator, which is a online program that my students are using to prepare for the next digital SAT, I wanna share with you three questions that I think you should definitely know how to solve as you prepare for your next digital SAT. So that's what the first question looks like. And as always, all the questions that we go over in this video, plus all the links that you will need to study for these are going to be nicely organized into a PDF, which I'm gonna link in the pinned comment down below. I highly recommend you guys print these out and try them with me. So the question says, what's the negative solution to the given equation? So for the paper SAT, we were used to seeing that much right there and we just have to find the value of X that way. But for the digital SAT, they're giving you multiple absolute values. And you need to know how to combine, separate, multiply, and divide. It's actually really, really simple. So you see how the absolute values are essentially the same? So think them as variables. You know how if it's like 7x minus 3x, you just get 4x like so. So pretend that the absolute value portion is going to be a variable and just work the outside like so. And from here, this four on the outside is being multiplied to this absolute value portion right here, just like how seven is being multiplied to X. So to get rid of it, we're just gonna simply divide both sides by four, and we're gonna get absolute X minus two is equal to seven. And from the absolute value lecture, we have learned that absolute values have two versions, both positive and negative. For positive, it's gonna be X minus two is equal to positive seven, negative X minus two is equal to negative seven. X is nine, or X is equal to negative five, which means our answer is gonna be negative five. So for the digital SAT, everything you need to know about absolute value is going to be this plus what is going to be inside this concept summary right here. You can't really see the link over here, but once you download the PDF and click right here, it's gonna take you to a concept summary. And now let's move on to the second question, which looks something like this. The function G is defined as shown above right here. If the graph of F of X is the result of translating the graph of G of X down three units, What's the value of f of two? So this question is testing you on what's known as translation and translation was something that was tested like a couple times here and there very rarely on the paper SAT. But for the digital SAT, it's showing up so frequently and you just need to know how to do two things. So we know that f of x is a result of moving g of x down three units. And this is known as the vertical shift because we're moving the graph up or down. In this case, we're moving it down three units. So that's a vertical shift. And if that's the case, we simply apply the change to the outside of the function. So in this case, it would be g of x minus three because we're moving it down three units. The second thing is going to be the horizontal shift, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's first finish solving this question. And now we know that f of x is essentially the same thing as g of x minus three. And we're simply going to copy this part down and that is f of x. And because we're looking for f of two, we simply plug in two for the x's over here, which gives us minus one, five, and then two minus three. And if we multiply all this out, we're gonna get negative 10 minus three, which is negative 13. So that tells us f of two over here is going to be same thing as negative 13 over there. So our answer is going to be negative 13. So for the vertical shift where you move the graphs up or down, you're gonna to have to apply the changes to the outside of the function. But when it comes to horizontal shift where you're moving the graphs left or right, you're gonna to have to apply the changes to the inside of the function right there. So for example, if it's three units to the right, it's gonna look something like g of x minus three. So that's just a quick summary, but a detailed summary of translation on everything you need to know for the digital SAT is going to be linked right here. And now the third and the last question will be on triangles. If triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F have angles A and D each measuring 37 and sides A, B, and D, E measure 10, 
which the following piece of information is sufficient to determine whether these two triangles are congruent or not. So for the paper SAT, we saw this version of question asking for two triangles being similar. But for the digital SAT, it's kind of half and half now. They're asking what makes two triangles similar and what makes two triangles congruent. And what you need to know about similarity can be learned over here and congruency is going to be learned over here. But let's quickly go over this question. So when it comes to geometry, you first have to always visualize everything out, which makes the question so much easier. We have A, B, C, and we have D, E, F over here. In angle A, D have 37 each, and A, B, and D, E measure 10 each. And in order for you to determine whether these two triangles are congruent or not, you have to know one of these four things for both triangles. Angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 and angle, angle, side. And you probably have heard of this at some point in your life. And here's how this works. Let's check choice A over here, length of B, C, and E, F. So if we know B, C, and E, F, so let's say this is like five and five. Well, right now we know angle, side, and side, right? So we know angle, side, and side, and we know this is not any of these four conditions right here. So our choice A is not going to work. It's not sufficient to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And congruent just means these two triangles are essentially identical. They're the same triangles with same angles and same side length. It's like copy and paste. But what about choice B, the measure of angle B and E? So B and E, let's say it's something like 20 here and then 20 here. If we do that, we have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So we have ASA, which is one of the conditions to prove congruency. So as a result, that's going to be our answer. But wait, let's try out choice C just in case it works. What if we know not B and E, but just the angle B? Let's say it's like 20 right there. We technically have angle, side, angle. We have angle, side, angle for the first triangle. But for the second triangle, we only have angle, side, unknown. And remember, in order for you to prove congruency, you have to know one of these things for both triangles. It can't be just for one of them. It has to be for both triangles you're working with. And that's just one part of congruency you need to know for digital SAT. Everything else is going to be nice summarized in this lecture slash summary over here. And if you have found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates for the digital SAT. And I'll see you guys on the next video.